Now DJI makes one of the most unique power stations on the market. And this one in particular, because it has these special SDC connection ports here that no other system has. And what that allows it to do is have special connectors that are available now, as well as anything in the future that they come out with can connect directly to this. My name is Ben, this is the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm taking a look at the DJI Power 1000 portable power station. Now, seriously, this is an incredible unit in terms of what it can add that no other system can. And I'm gonna go through that in this video, as well as the major drawbacks and hiccups that I found while using this system over the last month. There are some crazy connectors like this super fast solar charge connector, this bi-directional car charger, which can both charge this unit and jumpstart a car. And there's a special secret hack that I'm gonna show you that you can do with this in order to expand this system with any brand of battery. But I wanna go through the specs really quick so that way you know what you're getting with the DJI Power 1000, as well as the relationship that I have with DJI, so that way it's all clear and on the table. First and foremost, I'm not being censored, edited, controlled in any way, shape or form on what I'm allowed to say about this system. That's how all of my videos are. This is a good unit, but there are some major drawbacks that I'm gonna show you so that way you can see up front exactly what to expect from it. So they did send out this unit and the solar panel that I'm gonna show that goes with this, but that doesn't mean it's automatically gets a pass in any way just because they sent it out to me. And this only weighs 29 pounds. So in terms of portability, this is very easy to move around. They have a very powerful inverter. It's pure sine wave and rated to 2200 watts of continuous output. And that's just from the AC outlets right here. But combined with the DC outlets as well, everything total, the whole unit can do 2600 watts of output. And then it'll peak up to 4400 watts just from these outlets right here, which means if you have any inductive load or anything that takes up a heavy amount of energy to get started, such as a water pump, that's gonna be able to be handled by this and it will function as a very fast acting UPS. UPS just means an uninterrupted power supply. So one of the ways that I've been using my DJI power stations is as a UPS, where I'll keep a refrigerator or a little crypto miner or my laptop or whatever it is plugged into this. Then if I get any power fluctuations or power outages, then this will immediately kick over from running on the grid to running whatever's plugged into here off grid. And depending on what's plugged into it will determine how long it lasts because this is a small portable system and it only has a 1024 watt hour battery. So it's not a huge battery. Now it does have expansion batteries and I am gonna get into that and there's a special hack so that way you can expand it even more using cheaper batteries. But those batteries are rated to 4,000 cycles, meaning that after 4,000 uses, they'll be 70% as good as they were compared to brand new. So you'll get roughly 700 watt hours out of it instead of 1,000 watt hours. The first major problem that I had with the Power 1000 was how to plug in these accessories, or really not how to plug them in, but how to get them to work while being plugged in. So for example, this is a 1.8 kilowatt solar and car fast charger. It has these special ports on it on the front. You have a DC output, you have alternator input, and then this is an SDC connection to go into this upper port here. But you can't use any of the accessories until you get their dongle to work. Now this is just a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi dongle that it goes into the bottom SDC light port. So you would think that by plugging it in, this little green light would turn on and you'd be able to connect it to your phone. Not so fast. In order to get the dongle to work, which allows you to connect the app to it, as well as use any other accessories, you have to first download their software onto a computer. Now the problem is in all of their user manuals, there are no instructions on how to get this to work. So I plugged it in thinking it was gonna be just fine and that didn't work. Then I'm gonna show you exactly how to do the firmware update with your computer so it's easy. First thing that you do is you're gonna have the system turned off. You're going to plug in a USB cable from your computer to either of these USB-C ports. I actually did USB-C on my computer and then went to the left USB-C port here. I don't think it actually makes a difference. Then you're gonna push the power button and the AC button for two seconds at the same time. 
Now this is gonna work with the DJI program. Now I'll have it here up on the screen. This is what you need to download and have open before you turn this on with that AC power button. Then it's gonna be able to find the device. You're gonna click the DJI 1000 within the DJI program and you're gonna click update. It's gonna go through a number of cycles here on the screen and it only takes a couple of minutes for it to do all of the updates. But that's where my first problem came in. Mine failed. So I ran it again and it failed again and I did it again and it failed again. And in addition to that, on the bottom left of the screen, it actually said error 02, and it would not go away even though I was resetting the unit. So I felt like I had no option there, but I did notice that this dongle started working. I was able to get it on my phone and connect the Power 1000 to the app, and this little green light was turning on on the dongle. So then I went in on my phone into the app and connected to it. The first thing that it asked me to do was to do a firmware update and I could see that it needed to do that. So from the app then, I did do the firmware update, but guess what? It failed again and then again. But the third time something curious happened. As I was doing the update, the app itself timed out and wasn't saying on the phone that it was updating but on the Power 1000, it was updating on the screen. And it acted very different this time. It actually took closer to five minutes to do the update. And it was actually on the last update that it was moving much slower. After that completed, it was completely updated and working 100%. So you may have some issues getting it updated and working at first, but in the end it did work for me, but that it was a big hassle. You can ask me any questions you want by commenting down below or emailing me at info at poweredportablesolar.com. And I'll respond to your email personally, helping you figure out what system you need. But some people have emailed and asked for a system that has no Bluetooth and no Wi-Fi. And the Power 1000 can do that because as soon as I pull this dongle out, there is zero connectivity. There is no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi module within this unit. And the cool thing about that is say I'm out camping or just at home and I don't want any security problems with my system, I can just unplug that dongle and China or campers or my neighbors, no one has any potential access to my unit or anything that's plugged into it. And additionally, there's not gonna be any EMF coming off of the dongle, no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to interfere with anything as well. So this has an optional stealth mode with it by not having the dongle plugged in. I think that's really cool. Now the fans do kick on when you first turn on the system, but it doesn't run the fans hardly ever. Unless you're running a really heavy load, then the fans will kick on and they're decently loud. I wouldn't say they're very loud by any means. You can still carry on a conversation easily right next to them. So if you're using this in a hot environment, you'll probably hear those fans kick on. And one thing that's very different about the DJI Power 1000 is there is no built-in solar input. There's no charge controller inside of this. In order to charge this off of solar, I either need this super fast charger or their optional MPPT charge controller that plugs into this top section here. This plugs in very simply just by taking this cable here, plugging it into the top SDC port. I usually go through the handle here so that way it loops and keeps itself organized. And then I take this power brick, put it right on the top, and then I plug in to this SDC here. Now this 1.8 kilowatt charger is two different parts. It has up to 1.2 kilowatts of solar input, and that's from 12 volts to 60 volts and up to 20 amps. So very familiar to what we've seen on the Anchor Solux F3800. That 60 volt mark, which is a common charge controller, is definitely a thumbs down for me. I prefer to see at least 100 volts on a charge controller, preferably nothing less than 150 volts, but we also have to consider this is only a 1000 watt hour battery. So whether I'm wall charging or solar charging, it is gonna be pretty easy to get fast charging into this. Remember, this is more just for portable easy power. It's not something that's going to run your whole house. There's 1.2 kilowatts that can come in from the solar, and then you have an alternator input right here that can do another 600 watts of input. Now, when I connected this all up outside, it was not the perfect solar conditions. It was snowing a little bit, it was very cold out, there were some clouds, but I still wanted to try it on my 400 watt solar panels. So you can see that I was connecting up to my 400 watt panel right here. These panels make 37 volts each. So at first I tried one panel and I was getting 80% out of the solar panel, which is a standard that's pretty normal to get 80% of the rated output. 
from the solar panel at around 320 watts. But then I wanted to add a second panel because the clouds really came in and the solar conditions got even worse. So I used this branch connector to put two panels together in parallel. That keeps the volts at 37 volts, but then doubles the amperage. And this will only let in up to 20 amps. So even though I'm connecting up to 26 amps worth of panels, the charge controller won't let more than 20 go through it. That's perfectly safe to do. It's not a problem to go over on the amps, but you never want to go over on the volts that will fry the charge controller. And once I put the two panels together, I was getting over 500 watts, which for the conditions seemed about right. One thing that was really interesting to me though, is that even in these poor conditions, I was getting 30% power production from the solar panels, even though it's cloudy. So just because it's cloudy doesn't mean you're not going to get solar, but you're definitely not going to get full solar if you don't have a clear sunny sky. Now, additionally, I tried their 100 watt folding solar panel. It has a cable that's already built into it, and that's an XT60 connection, and there's no connection on here or on this power box for XT60. So I'd have to get a different MPPT charge controller to work with that panel. So definitely a thumbs down for me in that regard because it doesn't work with this system as it is or the components that were sent out with it. But in terms of portability, this thing is very compact, very lightweight, and 100 watts for this would take over 10 hours to charge. So you would want to get at least a few of those folding 100 watt panels. Really what you should do is you should look at these patent pending solar panel stands that I've made. They're here on these 400 watt panels and I could actually get a 400 watt panel and these legs for less than the cost on that 100 watt folding solar panel if you're not needing that portability. Or you just buy a typical 100 watt panel for less than 100 bucks and you get the stands and all together you're still much less than the cost of a folding panel. So unless you need that ultra portability, I'd definitely take a look at those stands. And those are on my website at poweredportablesolar.com. That's something that I personally invented and have a patent pending on it. Now this here, this alternator smart charger is one of the coolest things that I've seen. And what it has on here are two posts. You have a negative and a positive post and it comes with this heavy gauge cable right here. This is about 10 feet of cabling. What this charge controller does here is it will convert 12 or 24 volt battery power to 48 volt. And all that's going to happen is your alternator in your vehicle is going to basically be running power to the battery. And then this is going to put a draw on the battery. It will then convert that power to this system just through this DC to DC converter. You can expect the fans to get pretty loud on this because this will build up a decent amount of heat, but it also has an on off switch right here, as well as a controller button here on the side. So it's going to send power from the battery to this and keep it charging up anywhere from like 400 to 1000 watts. This is a smart DC to DC converter. If the alternator is struggling to put more power into this, this will reduce how much power it's demanding from the battery. So it'll not only charge the power station, but if the car battery dies, I can send power from the power station back to the car and jumpstart it. But there's one more special hack. This is not advertised anywhere, and that's using a normal 12 volt battery. So as an example, this is a 200 amp hour 12 volt battery. We'll say this is our car battery. This here is the equivalent of two and a half of the batteries inside the main unit. Using these cables, I could connect to these battery posts here and then connect it all up to this power charger. So what it's gonna allow me to do is discharge up to a thousand watts from this into here, giving me that excess power. Now these batteries you can find for between like 300 and 400 bucks, which is less than half the cost of DJI's expansion battery. Now there is a downside with this. There's no communication between the onboard battery and the external battery here. So these will not keep the same state of charge. So if you wanna have proper communication and everything working cleanly, then I recommend getting the expansion battery from DJI, which has a 2,048 watt hour capacity, whereas this is closer to about 2,500 watt hours of capacity. So you do get more out of this, but with the DJI version, you're gonna get proper communication, as well as say I'm running a 1,000 watt load, the battery pack will do 66% of the work, whereas the internal battery pack will do 33% because of the DJI battery bank being twice as big. So it's gonna keep everything balanced properly, which is gonna drastically increase your life cycles. 
But the fact that you can use any affordable expansion battery and just use this as a hack, I think is super cool. Now it also comes with an inline fuse and a spare fuse to make sure that everything is staying safe. You don't want to ruin your car or the system. So all of that comes with it. And you have an optional cigarette lighter port here. It just plugs into the SDC port and that'll give you your typical 12 volt 10 amp output for running like a DC fridge or anything like that. Now the inverter on the Power 1000 is about 85% efficient, which means you're gonna get somewhere around 850 watt hours out of this battery. It's very typical that you don't get 100% battery out of an inverter because you're converting from DC power to AC power. And 85% is pretty typical. Some units can get as high as like 91 to 94%, so that's not very common. And as DJI continues to bring out new accessories, the SDC port allows you to use any type of accessory. So that's one of the future-proof benefits of the power 1000 is as they release new stuff it'll still work with this so theoretically a few years down the road you'll still be able to add on to it on dji's website you'll find the power 1000 for about 855 dollars currently but if you go to amazon you'll find it for about 500 dollars it says it's a limited time deal so i don't know if that is true or not but currently those are the prices and that is very affordable for the amount of power you can get out of this their expansion battery i believe is about 900 dollars and the folding 100 watt panel is about 300 dollars so in total, if you're going with the DJI setup and their expansion battery, you're around 50 cents a watt hour, which is definitely below average for most power stations out there. I've been using this as a UPS for my office, and you could also use it for like a sump pump or a refrigerator, or if you're charging a drone battery or running a laptop or charging batteries for power tools, running a chop saw or a skill saw, or even something like a table saw, all of that can be corded and put into here. I've even used this to run a winch on my trailer and pull vehicles up onto my flatbed trailer. This is a very powerful and lightweight system. That's why I like it. But the firmware updating is absolutely atrocious. I hate that. And I would prefer that this would have a charge controller built into it with higher voltage. So that way it's more sustainable. And I'd also like to see on the expansion batteries to have additional solar, but that's because I'm really focused on solar. I'm looking for off-grid power that's portable, easy to take with me, and that in a grid down situation, I know is reliable. Now, if you wanna see what I've used to run my entire house off-grid, I'm gonna put that video right here. But if you're just looking for portable power that's easy to use, definitely take a look at the Power 1000. Their customer service is also very, very good. And that's just because they're such a big, reliable brand. And if you wanna see what other systems I recommend for backup power, check out poweredportablesolar.com. And I appreciate you watching. Be prepared. See you on the next video.